in December, we were in a time of prayer at our church, and one of the prophets in our church began to prophesy, and he said, the Lord said that I'm bringing you out of a place of brokenness, and I'm bringing the church into a time where they're going to learn to dance the dance of the Maha Naim. Maha Naim. Let's say it together. Maha Naim. Good Hebrew. All right. So Jacob went his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp, and he called the name of that place Maha Naim. Mahanaim means two camps or two armies. And I believe that what God is saying to us, when he said that, he said, God said, it's time to dance the dance of the Mahanaim. He said, I don't even know what that means. I had just that morning read Genesis 32 and had just looked up what Mahanaim meant. What are the odds of that? This prophetic stuff is crazy. It means two camps or two armies. One army on earth, a second army in heaven. God is saying this is the time that we're going to learn how to dance the dance of two armies. I want you to understand that when Jesus said, I will build my church in Matthew chapter 16, he did not use a word that meant I will build my congregation. He did not use a word that meant I will build a sanctuary. He did not build a word, uh, uh, he did not use a word that meant I will build a, a, a group of worshipers. No, he used a secular word. It was not even an ecclesiastical word. It was a secular word. He said, I will build my ecclesia. And when I build my ecclesia, the very gates of hell will not be able to prevail against you. He chose a word that was well known in the Roman culture of that day because previously, several hundred years before, the Greeks actually used this word, ecclesia, uh, because it actually means called out ones. How many of you have been called out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son? Amen? called out of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. But in Greece, the called out ones were those that were called out from the general population to become a special legislative body in the land that would determine the laws that happened in Greece. I hear my Doug Kent out there amening me. Where are you? I can't see you. There he is back there. Okay. Ecclesia called out once to form a legislative body. They were the Greek Senate. Think about what Jesus said. I will build my body of spiritual legislators. I will build my body of spiritual legislators. And when you understand that you've got legislative authority, the very gates of hell will not prevail against you. As a matter of fact, I will give you the keys of the kingdom so that whatever you bind will be bound. Whatever you loose will be loose. Another translation says it this way. Whatever you forbid will be forbidden. Whatever you allow will be allowed. Church, let me ask you, what are we forbidding and what are we allowing? We are God's army we are God's spiritual body of legislators here in this earth that are to be making decrees that shift the spiritual atmosphere that allow and forbid what's taking place in our territory. This is why Jesus taught us to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That phrase literally means to superimpose heaven on earth. This is our job. In your workplace, in your neighborhood, in your schools, to superimpose heaven. How do we do that? We keep bringing the kingdom of heaven in. Into the music industry. Into the corporations. Into all the places that God has in Nashville. God is saying, you are his body of spiritual legislators. Now, when Rome conquered Greece, the Romans also used this term ecclesia, but they used it as a military term. The, the way that the Romans used it, in the days that Jesus was alive, when he said, I will build my ecclesia... Here's what the ecclesia was in Rome. 
It was those that were called out of the general military population to form a specialized task force, military task force, whose assignment was to go into all the newly conquered Roman territories, and their job was make this new territory look just like heaven. I mean, look just like Rome. Build buildings that look like Rome. Build roads that look like Rome. And everywhere you go in the ancient world, you can actually find that those cities built amphitheaters. They built Rome, uh, R Roman roads. They built, uh, they established culture. They established laws because they replicated Rome in this new territory. Thy kingdom come, superimposing heaven on earth. So God, Jesus was saying, I will build my spirit body of spiritual legislators, I will build my military task force that whatever you bind will be bound, whatever you loose will be loose. And he's saying, and when you do this, the very gates of hell will not prevail against you. Guess what? You've got that authority in your home to bind and loose. You don't have to get run to your pastor or run to a prophet to get a word. I love giving words, but you don't have to have that. You just got the word of God that says you're authorized. You can do that. You can take authority. You can rise up. God is saying it's the time of the dance of the two armies. Now, in, in uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 13, it actually says this. I'll read you another scripture. I could quote it to you, but you'll believe me better if I read it. Okay. Okay, so it actually says this. It says, come back, come back, O Shulamite. Come back that we may gaze on you. Would you gaze on the Shulamite? as on the dance of the Mahanaim. The dance of the Mahanaim, first of all, if we're going to move into this authority, we've got to understand this. What Song of Solomon is referring to is a dance of intimacy. And we can preach about taking back a nation, but where it starts is exactly where Jasmine led us in worship tonight. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. See, the number 21 for this year is linked to covenant, fulfillment, and contending. Covenant, fulfillment, and contending. I don't have time to go into all of that, but let me just say, 21 is a covenant number, and God's saying, the most important thing I want to do right now is bring my people into covenant. We cry out for revival, and God is saying, I want to revive my people. I want to revive them. We cry out for awakening, and God's saying, I want to awaken my people. I was, I was in a hotel room probably, I don't know, a number of years ago up in Michigan. And I woke up that morning, and I had a dream. I'm, I'm a dreamer. I, I have lots and lots of dreams. I had a dream that night. And as I was laying there in bed, I, I woke up, and I was meditating on the dream and thinking about it. But honestly, just to be really truthful here, I just think the last 10 minutes in bed are the most comfortable 10 minutes in bed. Okay? So anybody else feel that way? Okay, yes, I see that hand. Okay. So I was laying there, and I was kind of snuggled in the covers, and I was thinking about this dream, and I was rolled onto my side. And I was all by myself in that hotel room when suddenly I felt a hand, a physical hand on my shoulder and it shook me really hard and I heard a loud voice say, wake up! I was terrified. People would say, oh, I saw an angel. No, I was like, my liver was quivering, okay? It was like terrifying. I didn't actually see the angel, but he was the one that came and shook me. And I sat up in the bed and I was shaking from head to toe. How many think you might be shaking if you're in, alone in a room, okay? And I, I said to the Lord, wow, Lord, I thought I was awake. And he said, most of my church thinks that they're awake. But they're still asleep. He said, you need to wake up so that you can wake them up. So tonight I'm here to say, wake up! Wake up! We've got to understand Jesus is calling us into that place of covenant. That dance of intimacy. That place where we get back in the word. I'm so concerned about the body of Christ that doesn't know the word. We've got to read our Bibles. We've got to spend time praying. We've got to pray in the spirit. Let me challenge you. Our staff starts every morning by praying in tongues for an hour. Every morning. That's how they start. 
I remember my first time, we, we were going to divide it up into 24 hours, and I took my first time at 24 hours a few years back, and I got in our sanctuary. I walked around that sanctuary several times, praying in tongues. I took some flags and waved some flags and prayed in tongues. I got on my face for a while, praying in tongues. I got on my knees for a while, praying in tongues. I thought, surely my hour's up. I looked at my watch. It had been seven and a half minutes. Listen, we've got to learn to practice spiritual disciplines. <laughs> we want God to break through for us, but we've got to press in. We've got to wake up. So it's a dance of covenant. It's also, and I think most importantly, a dance of contending. Contending. That means that we've got to fight. When it says the angels of God met him, the angels of God met him at Mahanaim, that word met in Hebrew is the word paga. Paga. Paga means they interceded or they got in the way. You understand that's what the word intercede means? It doesn't mean just go into a prayer closet and pray. It means get in the way. Do you see some things happening in your community that you don't like? Sometimes you got to get in your prayer closet. Other times you got to get out there and get in the way. 